Hello and welcome to the first section of chapter 8, section 5. Uh, we're going to be spending a couple days on exponential growth. Here are the answers to 8.4, day 3, the application problems. I think, okay. So all these problems involve scientific notation. And today what we're going to get into is exponential growth equations. And then 8.6 is exponential decay equations um, or functions. They're very similar. Um, so if you learn 8.5, 8.6 is going to go pretty, pretty quick for you. All right, so let's first talk about the difference in what we've seen this year and what we're going to learn about. So linear equations are lines. They add or subtract the same amount every single time. That value is controlled by this slope here. The 2 represents the y-intercept, kind of like where the graph starts at. Uh, this is an example of an exponential equation. Exponential equation. If we take a look at these values down here, every time we go up by 1 on the x, in this case, we are multiplying by 3 on the y values. And so what's going to happen is exponentials are either going to be multiplying or dividing by a value instead of adding or subtracting. This, since we're talking about growth, we're going to be multiplying. This 2 is kind of like the y-intercept. It's your, your initial value. It's when uh, x equals 0. All right, so here's some notes for you guys. Again, we're going with addition and subtraction versus multiplication and division. Or sorry, today we're going with multiplication and division instead of addition and, and subtraction. Okay, so graph the two equations. All right, so if I plug in values here, what we did is, well, we don't even need to make a table of values. We know slope-intercept form starts at 2, slopes 3 over 1. Okay, so we're going to make a table here. So when I plug in 0, 3 to the 0 is 1 times 2 is 2. When I plug in 1, 3 to the first is 3 times 2 is 6. Plug in 2, 3 squared is 9 times 2 is 18. So you're going to see the values get really big really quickly. Now when I plug in negative 1, you have 2 over 3, because we have to bring that 3 to the negative 1 to the bottom to make it positive. And then 3 to the negative 2 would be 2 over 3 squared, which would be 2 ninths. All right, now, again, the values as we go smaller are going to get really, really, really close to zero, but we're never actually going to get to zero because you can't, you're, you're going to keep dividing by three as you get smaller and smaller and smaller. So you're never actually going to reach zero. So it's very important when you're graphing these that you don't cross the x-axis in this case, unless there was a, a, a translation shifting it down, which, which could happen. And it's really tricky to get close here, but you're just going to estimate those values. And then when you get to over to 2 and 18, my graph only goes up to 7, 8, 9, 10. 18, we'll just estimate somewhere up there. And this is how you draw your graph. And like I said, you're going to get close to the x-axis, but you're not going to cross the x-axis. And that's how you graph an exponential growth equation. Um, writing the rule, and we're going we're gonna to do a few more graphs here. You're going to have your initial value and your growth rate. So A is your initial value. This is A right here. It's where x equals 0. So in this case, 8. And then you're going to see what is the pattern. This one's doubling. It's multiplying by 2 every time. So that is going to be your B value. And that would be the exponential equation that goes with the table. All right, so this one here, we're starting at 27. So y equals 27. And this one is tripling every time, so times 3. So they're really easy to write the equation as long as you kind of know what a and b represent. OK, so again, here's a few more graphing problems. Um, this one's a little more straightforward. So it's just 2 to the power of x. This is actually a parent function for the base of 2. So when I plug in 0, I get 1. Plug in 1, I get 2. Plug in 2, you get 4. And then go backwards, I'm just going to divide by 2, 1 half, and then 1 fourth. So it's kind of, once you understand the pattern to these, like the growth rate, you can just apply that function. Kind of like It's kind of like slope. 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 4. And then half, 
and a quarter. And again, this graph is not going to cross the x-axis. This one we've already seen, so I'm going to skip this one. But I'm going to do this one right here. This one has a negative sign in front of it. So I'm going to start with 0. 2 to the 0 is 1 times 3 is uh, 3, and then it's negative. And then 2 to the first is 2 times 3 is 6, but then it's negative. 2 squared is 9, or sorry, 2 squared is 4 times 3 is negative 12. And then negative 3 over 2 to the first is negative 3 halves. And then negative 3 over 2 squared, because I got if I plug in negative 2, I move it to the bottom, is negative 3 fourths. So you're really applying a lot of the stuff that we learned in 8.3. OK, let's plot these points 0, negative 3, and then 1, negative 6. And 2, negative 12 is going to be down here somewhere. And then 1, negative 3 halves. And then negative 2, negative 3 fourths. OK. And again, I'm not going to cross that x-axis. Okay, so a few things that we talked about, or we've seen here, is there's the parent function. This one was multiplied by 3, this one was multiplied by negative 3. So when you're multiplying in equations, we've seen this before, the transformations, these are vertical stretches. And then this negative sign right there, that negative 3, causes a reflection in the x-axis, or I would say reflection over the x-axis. Now you can also have vertical shrinks, but we're um, to create a vertical shrink, we will talk about that with the decaying. Actually, no, this, sorry. We're going to talk about that right now. This is our vertical shrink right here. When the A value is between 0 and 1. And this is a reflection as well. So we have a vertical shrink of 1 third. And then we have a vertical shrink of one third as well as reflection. And so when it asks you to compare, that's what they're that's what they're looking for. So here in my assignment, I have these problems. It says only explain, don't graph. So that's talking about describe the transformation. And I'm going to show you guys how to move the graph left and right and up and down in class uh, using Desmos. So we can, we can not only do vertical stretches and shrinks and reflections, we can also do translations up and down and left and right. So that is what we got going on today. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope the graphing makes sense. If it doesn't, um, I will go over another sample problem in class for you guys. Uh, have